Hi everyone, welcome back to another ham radio video. On August 23rd, 2024, Yezu announced the FTX-1F, their replacement for their discontinued 817 and 818 QRP rigs that were very popular the day before them showing it at the 2024 Tokyo Ham Fair in Japan. The Yezu FTX-1F, a dual band SDR portable QRP radio, which appears to be Yezu's answer to the ICOM IC705, five years after the ICOM IC705 was announced at the Tokyo Ham Fair in 2019, which started shipping in 2020. Yezu says that the FTX-1F will be available in early 2025. In this video, I will compare the Yezu FTX-1F's preliminary specs to the ICOM IC705 to compare what these radios have in common. Then we will compare noted differences between them based again on the preliminary FTX-1F's specs after which we will then take a closer look at the Yezu FTX-1F from pictures taken at the Tokyo Ham Fair this past weekend. Please keep in mind that Yezu will be announcing more information on the radio in the future and may change certain information in this video. Okay, so I'm comparing these two radios together. So as you can see, I put the features on the left in yellow. I put the Yezu FTX-1F in red in the middle and the ICOM 705 on the right in blue. So first off, both of these radios are HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. They're both all mode, single sideband, CW, AM, FM, and digital. Now noted, the Yezu's digital is, of course, C4FM, their fusion system, and ICOM is D-Star. They both are capable of receiving airband. Both of them are capable of receiving the weather stations in the U.S. Um, both of these have 4.3-inch color TFT touch displays. Both are based on SDR technology. Both of these have Spectrum waterfall scopes. Now, lithium ion battery packs. Now, Yezu announced that their battery pack will be 5,670 milliamp hours. And according to Yezu, that's gonna be good for nine hours on HF and about eight hours on VHF UHF. Now, on the ICOM side, the 705 comes with a BP272 battery, which is a 1,880 milliamp hour battery, good for about three hours according to ICOM. But they do have the optional BP307 battery, which is 3,150 milliamp hours for extended run times. Now, uh, neither one of these radios have an internal tuner. Um, however, there are some options, and we'll get to that in a moment. But Yezu does have the option to have a clip-on antenna tuner, which will clip on to the radio. Um, both of these radios are capable of cat operation. Um, both of these have the optional antenna tuners. So like I said, the Yezu has one that attaches to the radio directly, while ICOM has a separate uh, external antenna tuner for the 705. Both of these radios are capable of 10 watts on external power. Now let's compare some of the noted differences between these two radios. Again, I have these features on the left in yellow, the Yezu FTX-1F in red in the middle, and the 705 on the right in blue. Um, now, only the Yezu FTX-1F is capable of dual receive. The ICOM 705 is not. The Yezu has dual speakers. The ICOM only has a single speaker. Um, of course, a feature of the Yezu is the 3D, three-dimensional uh, display, which, of course, the S705 does not have. Um, now, noted features that the 705 has that have not been listed out for the Yezu thus far. So right now, the 705 does have wireless LAN or Wi-Fi. It does have Bluetooth. And the ICOM 705 does have uh, GPS built in. Now, when we look at the pictures on the new Yezu FTX-1F, you'll see that there's a port to plug in a GPS. So I believe that the, uh, the new Yezu radio will have GPS. It just will not be built in, apparently, as it is in the 705. Both of these um, have noise reduction. And I have to admit, the Yezu uh, digital noise reduction, in my opinion, is far superior than ICOM's noise reduction. So that is a very big plus uh, for me as I see it because I have like the Yezu FT891, which I've mentioned many times on my channel, and the digital noise reduction on that is awesome. I mean, it just cuts out all the noise and the voice comes in very clearly. So I really like that feature. Uh, I wish ICOM would really step up on their noise reduction. Um, obviously, the Yezu has System Fusion C4FM again. Uh, obviously, ICOM 705 does not have this. Um, now, of course, the 705 does have D-Star, while the Yezu does not. Okay, um, 
Battery uh, or power output with a battery pack. Now, Yezu says it's on the battery, uh, the radio, the FTX-1F can put out to six watts. Now, I have a question mark here in parentheses. Uh, will it do, do lower modes than six watts? I think I did see that it will do two watts on AM. Um, but on the ICOM 705, the, with the battery pack, the, the, uh, the 705 is capable of, of transmitting anywhere from a half a watt up to five watts with the battery pack. And as I said, both these radios with external power supply will, will transmit at 10 watts. Um, another noted thing I saw is the 705 is, uh, also has weather alert for the USA. So there was no mention or I couldn't find anything about the AZU FTX-1F having a weather alert. Um, for their radio, but I do note that I have, and I have had for quite some time, the Yezu FT3DR, and it does have a weather alert feature on it, so I wouldn't uh, be surprised if the weather alert feature does come or is announced later on uh, by Yezu for the FTX-1F. Now, RIDI. Um, the 705 can both receive and decode RIDI and transmit RIDI, um, so not aware or haven't seen anything on the Yezu being able to do this. So next, next let's, uh, I'm sorry, next, let's take a look at the uh, pictures from the Tokyo Ham Fair and talk a little bit about what we see on this new radio from Yezu. Okay, taking a closer look at the Yezu FTX-1F. So first off, we'll start off with the front of the radio. Man, it's a beautiful looking rig, really nice, uh, very sharp looking uh, looks like pretty easy to understand the controls and operations of the rig. Um, just a beautiful design. So kudos to Yezu. Uh, very, very nice. First thing that stands out, of course, is the dual receive. Uh, I have often taught, I have often thought many times uh, as a 705 owner that, man, it would be really, really nice to have a 705 with dual receive. Um, so wink, wink to ICOM. Um, but uh, very, very nice. Um, this radio design seems to be very much in line with Yezu's recent uh, radio releases, the FT710, the FTDX10, and even the FTDX101s. Um, so very nice. So they're keeping very, uh, very much in line with the other radios as far as the look and functions of the radio, which is really nice to see. Um, so you see the 3D spectrum scope here, which is Yezu's uh, feature that they, uh, that they promote very much. Now, I honestly, I don't have a radio, a Yezu radio that has this feature, so I have not had a chance to mess with it. I just have to tell you off the top of my head, um, I don't see a benefit of this display as opposed to a 2D waterfall display, a traditional waterfall display in Spectrum Scope. That definitely has an advantage, as many of you will agree. Um, but I've heard many hams say that they just don't get the 3D SS display um, and how it's very how it's useful to them. There may be hams out there who disagree with that and find it very beneficial and really really like it. So I'm I'm not really going either way. I just without having my hands on a radio and checking it out and playing with it, I would just say at this point I just I just don't get it as far as how it would benefit me as a radio operator. Um, so very nice. Anyway, it still looks very awesome. Now, one other thing I will say that I do like about the ICOM, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in any way trying to bash Yezu, as I do like Yezu and own several radios. Um, I do like that on the ICOMs, you can customize the waterfall uh, display and colors uh, much more than on the Yezu. On the Yezu, you're stuck to only picking certain color schemes. So I would like to see an improvement, uh, maybe a firmware update in the future where you can pick any color you wish and uh, play around with a lot more. I really do like this feature in the ICOMs. So that would be really nice to say. But anything, really, everything else, I mean, it's a sharp looking radio. Uh, everything's really clear. Uh, you got the big VFO knob on the right. You got the quick memory bank button. You have the clarifier button. You have the back button. You have the fine and fast tuning button. Um, you have a display button. Uh, you got the function buttons and the, the dials. Uh, so very, very nice. Again, it's touch screen. Um, you also have some various uh, functions on the top. On the top left, the red, that's a wires X function in group memory, it looks like. You got a DX button. You have a PMG button, which stands for Yezu's primary memory group function. Then you have a MAG button, which is uh, Yezu's uh, memory auto grouping function. Um, and then you have a split function and a few other features there. So really, really nice. 
It looks like on the bottom, this does have two speakers. So it looks like those two speakers port out the bottom of the radio towards the user uh, or the operator. So very, very nice. So next, next, let's take a look at the pictures that came out of the Tokyo Ham Fest and have a closer look at the design of the Yaesu ftx one f Okay, so the pictures we're looking at were taken by hamlife.jp for Japan. And so any, all the, just so you know, all the information I found for this radio, I put the links in the description, including the link for the page uh, with these pictures. So as you can see here, we're looking at the rear of the ftx one f um, so, and we're going to scroll down to the next picture here to get a little bit more view. Now, something I didn't mention already, um, and, and I'm sure many of you are already aware, um, the, the connection for the antenna on the 705 is a BNC, and on the FTX-1F, there are also BNC connectors. Of course, it's, since it's dual receive, it has two BNC connectors. But as you can see in the picture here, we got the antennas. Um, one, the top one says HF and 50 megahertz, and the bottom one is for 144 and 430 megahertz. Um, you have a ground screw. You have a port for an external speaker, um, a tuner or a linear tuner. That might be for like a, a, an amplifier and possibly an external tuner. Um, and you have the DC in for 13.8 volts. Now, taking a look at the side of the radio here, um, this would be the left side of the radio as you look at it. So, as you can see here, you got the phone jack on top, the key jack um, for CW. Below that, you have a GPS port. So, now, as I just said, it doesn't look like there's GPS built in to the AZU FTX-1F. However, it looks like you can get an external GPS antenna and connect it to the AZU FTX-1F for GPS. And then you have a USB port below the GPS port. And then you have a modular microphone connector. Okay, taking a look at the right side of the radio as you look at it, um, looks like you have the micro SD card slot. Now, going a little bit down, next you have the battery pack. Uh, so this is showing the battery pack installed. And you can see it's quite a hefty looking battery. Um, so um uh quite big but of course it's you know like 5670 milliamp hours so it's gonna be quite large and heck i mean if it gives you nine to eight hours of runtime pretty pretty awesome especially for your poda and soda guys all right so um going further down now we're showing it with the uh, auto antenna tuner installed now you can see uh the bnc connectors going into it you can also see there's a, a, a SO239 connector on the left. I'm not sure exactly what that's for or how that works. Um, so that'll be something to, interesting to find out. Um, now here in the next photo, they're showing the cooling fan and auto antenna tuner uh, installed at the same time. So is the, is the, is the antenna tuner uh Built into the radio? No, but it does attach to the radio and hook to the radio, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, now, I got to admit, by looking at this, it does make the radio a bit more chunky. Um, a little, obviously, the profile is a little bit bigger now uh, with the added features. Um, so, something to think about there. Um, let's also talk a look here, too. Um, cooling fan. So there is an option for a cooling fan. Now, Yezu says that the cooling fan would be good for operation using FT8. So if you're running FT8 for a long time, the cooling fan is supposed to make it a more comfortable operation for the radio, uh, help cool it down. Now you can see in this photo, there's some vents uh, between the radio uh, and this, uh, this pack. So I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna show a picture here shortly. I don't, I don't really have a good photo of the fan, um, but this is also from Ham Life JP. Now I'm gonna zoom in, it's gonna be kind of grainy, so I apologize. But you can see the cooling fan here, and it looks like it, it, it bows out a little bit from where the radio is to suck air in and cool things down. So that is, I guess, wedged between, uh, going back to that last photo we saw, between uh, the auto and tuner uh, and the fan. So now I don't, don't know, I'll have to see if I have a picture of the auto tuner and the battery pack and the fan all put together. Um, I'll see if I can find a photo of that real quick 
If so, I'll put it here now so you can see it. But anyway, that's some closer looks of the Yezu. So I'm very excited. I I never intended to be an ICOM guy. I just graduated H Radio. I, I seem to get seem to be an ICOM. Um, like I said, I do own several Yezu radios, so I do like Yezu. Um, so I'm definitely not trying to bash Yezu or ICOM. Uh, I like them both, and I, I really do like healthy competition in ham radio, so we can continue to get innovative, awesome products. Um, so very, very awesome. So again, um, awesome for Yezu announcing the FTX-1F. I'm excited to see more information and more details about this radio as we go forward. So again, guys, thank you for joining me for another ham radio video, and uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe.